We'll turn our attention now overseas and the US President Barack Obama has met with Russian President Vladimir Putin at the G8 in Northern Ireland and the, the body language was frosty with key differences remaining between the two nations over how to respond to the civil war in Syria. And with respect to Syria, uh, uh, we do have uh, differing perspectives on the problem but uh, we share an interest in reducing the violence, uh, securing ke chemical weapons and ensuring uh, they're neither used nor uh, are they subject to proliferation. Uh, and that we want to try to resolve the issue through uh, political means if possible. And so we will uh, instruct our team to continue to work uh, on the potential of a uh, Geneva follow-up uh, to the first meeting. Joining me on the program now, Dr. Adam Lockyer from the U.S. Study Centre at the University of Sydney. Dr. Lockyer, thanks for your time. Obviously, a lot of posturing happening on this issue over the last week or so in terms of the U.S. indicating that it might arm the rebels. Uh, a lot of posturing ahead of that Geneva Peace Summit. How do you see it all playing out? Yes, so last Thursday in Washington, Obama announced that he was going to directly assist the rebels in their fight against the Assad regime. Now, this is a significant change in American policy. Up until now, uh, America's tried to stay aloof from the conflict, but now it's going to have skin in the game and its, its own credibility and reputation will be tied up with the outcome of the civil war. And, and was that a, a move designed more to, I suppose, give it some bargaining power at the Geneva Peace Conference or how do, how do you see the broader implications of that move by the US? Hmm. On, on the one hand it has something to do with the use of chemical weapons so Obama earlier had said that the use of chemical weapons in the civil war was going to be a red line that if the Assad regime used chemical weapons then there was going to be serious consequences and he hinted that the United States would then intervene on the side of the rebels. And now that's been apparently proven that the Assad regime has used chemical weapons. But I think that the major reason why Obama has announced that he's going to start to support the rebels right now is to start to balance up the balance of military capabilities on the battlefield. Assad has had a, a several uh, significant gains on the battlefield of recent and it seems as though the momentum of the fight is shifting towards the government and that's something the uh, Obama administration is trying to halt. Well with Hezbollah now engaged as well there's a there's a risk though isn't there that the US could could spend a lot in vain because the Syrian regime has been able to well, take some strategic and key cities back in recent times. By getting skin in the game, as you say, it's quite a risk. Oh, it is a significant risk. And we're not sure what the Russians are going to do now. We're not sure what Iran is going to do now. And we're already seeing the conflict spill over into neighbouring states. So we see, as you say, Hezbollah is now intervening on the side of the Assad regime. But we've also seen an increase in sectarian violence in Iraq between the Shia and Sunni, which many are accrediting to the conflict in neighbouring Syria. I want to ask you about the Iranian election this week, Dr Lockyer, and its implications. Is there... The, 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 the gentleman elected as the new Iranian president is a, a moderate cleric mm -hmm. by Iranian standards. Is this an opportunity to reboot the troubled relationship between Tehran and Washington? I think that Washington will try to exploit the change in Iranian leadership, though I think that Washington is more concerned with Iranian policy than its politics. So until they see definitive policy change in Iran, I don't think there's going to be a huge warming of relations. And Israel's already putting its pressure on Washington, saying that the change of president doesn't make much difference and it's the supreme leader uh, who make calls all the shots anyway when it comes to that country's nuclear program. Um, so the president uh, in Iran is not without any power, um, though they're, they're right that the president tends to be more of a figurehead, um, though the politics is moving and we'll wait to see what policy change we actually see out of Iran following these elections. Because Ahmadinejad and, and uh, Obama, in fact, the, the last decade or so, has been marked by deteriorating relations between the two nations. It wouldn't take much to... Uh, provide some improvement on that front but the early indications are that on the nuclear program that that uh, that that will remain 
and is non-negotiable. That's right, and that's going to be the major sticking point. Um, unless Iran announces that it's going to forego its nuclear development program, I don't see a huge warming of relations between Iran and the United States in the near future. Dr Adam Lockyer, lecturer in US politics and foreign policy at the US Study Centre at Sydney Uni. Thanks so much for your time this morning. Appreciate it. Thank you.